how on earth in 2022 did they find a panel of jurors who are truly impartial when it comes to Donald Trump? That's what I was wondering during this week's jury selection for the Trump Organization tax fraud trial in Manhattan's Supreme Court, which took three days. Twelve jurors were chosen. Two of the Trump Payroll Corporation defense lawyers will join me in just a moment to answer that question. Trump himself isn't personally charged in this case against his company, isn't expected to show up at the courthouse. Unlike his former chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, who pled guilty and is expected to be the state's star witness. But just as he looms over the midterms, despite not being on the ballot, he can't help but be a specter in the courtroom. Question 29 on the juror questionnaire form got to the crux of it. Do you have any strong opinions or firmly held beliefs about former President Donald J. Trump, either positive or negative, that would interfere with your ability to be a fair and impartial juror? As lead prosecutor Susan Hoffinger told the court, if we were to strike every juror who had a negative opinion about Donald Trump, we wouldn't be able to get a jury at all. And you have to believe other prosecutors who may be considering prosecuting Trump himself are closely watching this trial, this process. When Judge Juan Mershon first informed 130 potential jurors about details of this case, many waved their hands in the air to request private screening by the judge and lawyers about reasons they could not serve. More than half were then dismissed. One man was excused after saying Trump made him, quote, sick to his guts. Another was gone after calling Trump a demonstrative liar. One woman said, he's guilty in my mind, whatever the case is, anything he does, anything his corporation does. Of the 12 selected on Thursday, three or a quarter openly said they are not fans of the former president, but nevertheless said they could be fair and impartial as jurors. The man who would become juror number eight said, honestly, I used to think he was funny before he was president. Then he started acting a little crazy and narcissistic. That's the only reason I didn't like him as president. Not so much policy. Joining me now are two veteran Philadelphia lawyers working for the Trump Payroll Corporation defense team, William Brennan and Michael Vanderveen, both of whom also represented Trump during his second impeachment with Vanderveen taking the lead role. You'll remember him. Put it in your evidence, so I started to be able to get looking at it. You need to stop. There was nothing fun here, Mr. Raskin. We aren't having fun here. This is about Michael the most Michael Vanderveen, you're starting this trial with a quarter of the jurors saying they don't like, and I get it, you represent a, a corporate entity, but come on, they don't like Donald Trump. How can you win that? Well, um, uh, the, the first, uh, you win it by putting the facts into the case and, and putting your defenses on. But what we did in the jury selection is we tried to uh, uh, separate Donald Trump from the company. Uh, it, it, he's not a defendant in this case. Uh, it, it, they've investigated his companies thoroughly. Uh, they didn't uh, charge him with any criminal conduct. And, and the running of the company and the folks that were doing the acting for the company uh, are, are, are the focus of, of the trial uh, and I think will be uh, what carries the day for us. Bill Brennan, you've been quoted in the media as saying this is a garden variety tax fraud case. But still, won't it become a referendum on Trump? Michael, that's out of my control. I've been doing this for 35 years. This is a garden variety tax fraud criminal case. And that's how I'm going to try it. And we spent a long time uh, this week trying to select uh, 12 jurors who gave their word that they'll give us a fair shot. And I believe in the jury system. And I believe that uh, when people get into that jury box in that jury room, their, their best instincts take over. And I uh, take them at their word that they'll give us a fair shake. You know, we're presumed innocent. And uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a fair jury. Mike, Michael Vanderveen, so if I'm a prospective juror and I'm asked, what do you think of Donald Trump? And I disparage him. In fact, maybe I even use the word despise. How does it work? Am I then asked a question by the court? Well, you know, Mr. Smirconish, could you nevertheless put aside those feelings? And if I say, yeah, I could put aside all that, then, then I'm in? Yeah, that's uh, basically it and a little bit more expansive too, Mike. What we, what we do is we really start asking probing questions about uh, the specifics of uh, their feelings or emotions uh, and uh, talk to them about weighing the balance. 
But what's really most critical and what we rely on and what all lawyers rely on is once that jury is picked, seated, and sworn in, um, and, and they go back and they, they listen to the evidence and deliberate, uh, uh, that door closes and, boy, people try to do the best they can. They, they put aside their prejudices. They put, for the most part, put aside their biases um, and try to be the best jurors they can. They follow, uh, we find that they follow the, the judge's instructions closely uh, and, and they try to be the best part of our system that they can be. Counselor Brennan, in the end, it's a self-certification, right? You, you have to, the court has to take the word of a prospective juror that they have the ability to be fair and impartial, whatever their personal feelings might be. So do you worry about a sleeper cell? Do you worry about somebody who's just going to say whatever the hell they, they have to say so that they can get on that jury? Well, Michael, there's always that possibility. You're a lawyer. You've picked juries. You know that. The process comes... Uh, uh, the, the phrase comes from the French, voir dire. It means to speak the truth. And the uh, court and the prosecution team and the defense team gets to individually question each prospective juror, and we do the best we can. Uh, you know, it's, it, it may not be the best system uh, ever, but it's the best we've got. So uh, I believe uh, that after a, a week of questioning hundreds of prospective jurors, you know, it's sets and subsets, Michael. From the set of jurors, the veneer panel uh, uh, that we started with, I believe we had the best subset we could have uh, uh, gotten. Now, if somebody has a hidden agenda, it's hidden. We can't figure that out. We won't know that. But I agree with uh, Michael Vanderveen. Uh, I believe that uh, when 12 American citizens get into that jury room, they really do try to do the right thing. I'm a great believer yeah. uh, in the American jury system, and I, I believe that we will get a fair shake. And I was thinking as I'm speaking to the two of you, you know, maybe a change of, of venue, but where are you going to go in the country? I mean, these same issues would present themselves pertaining to Donald Trump, no matter, you know, if you're in Maine or if you're in uh, New Mexico.